Tales from Tiberia! Episode 6, Slime and Centipedes. Previously on Tales from Tetheria, while transporting the captured necromancer, the bounty hunters have come across a fort of kobolds. The gnome warlock Deborah managed to get a barrel of explosives right into their campfire, and the ranger Falamir shot it with a flaming arrow, but it is yet to explode. Meanwhile, the kobold scale sorcerer discovered the party and started blasting them with his scorching rays. All right, you're all caught up. I will give them all a DC 20 check to try to put out the fire arrow before it all explodes. So I will see if I can roll an 18 or higher. Nope, that's not the, nope. <laughs> nope, that's we, no. nobody. Nope. Nobody none, none of those four are able to put out the, the fire before the barrel gets there. So the barrel is on the fire. I will say that they're all there trying to put out the fire. It hasn't exploded yet. So the, sca so the scale sorcerer has gone. It's now going to be Krulax's turn. Okay, so I, I hit this guy for five, right? Or for six damage already? The guy in the front of you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so I hit him with my whip axe. I'm going to, with my other hand, whip a throwing axe at him. Okay. That's a... 15, 15 plus hits. 5, that's a 20. 20 hits. Nice. Okay, so 1d6. Oh, damn, that's a 1. What a laser corn roll. Plus 3, 4 damage. Okay, he is alive. He's not looking great, <laughs> but he's alive. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's a let's action surge, because I got it back after my short rest. Yep, sure did. And I'm going to... I'm gonna whip the axe, the the axe back, and I'm gonna whip him one more time. With so the whip if you're axe, pulling the arms. axe back, I need an athletics uh, saving. Oh, right. Make an athletics saving, a strength saving throw for me. Is this to see if he'll catch it to or not? To see if he'll catch it. Ah, uh, what I've been <laughs> waiting for. It's, but wait, it's tied to the whip. Yeah. So but you're, come back you're pulling an axe with a rope. Yeah, the, the, the axe is now flying towards you. You have a hatchet coming at your face. This is to check to see if you get hit in the face with your own axe. Oh, this is so uh, good. At, athletics check? Uh, um, either <laughs> athletics check or a, or a strength saving throw. I'm Dude, also just this, saying, this is the a, first time a, he's ever done this. Should it be done at disadvantage? No, 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 no. It's a 15. <laughs> 15's good. 15 it's, is okay. You're able to catch your axe. Huh? And now you can take the rest of your turn. Okay. And now I'm going to... With my with my action surge to give me one more action. Your I'm gonna action whip this surge? My action surge ability. Yes. The action surge to get into the action. Uh-huh. And that is a, a 17. So one more D. Wowza. One more D6 of damage. Yep. Six plus three, nine. That one is Take dead. That, that one Dang. falls over dead. Ah. Um, but yeah, as he I falls over dead. Um, I can't do that again, guys, because... <laughs> You're never capable of rolling you, like that? I, well, I used, I used my action surge, uh, so... As he falls over dead, uh, lots of things come tumbling off of his person. A basket of centipedes opens. Mm -hmm. like going to be covered in bugs. Uh, no. 17 to hit. Yeah, armor okay. class 16. Four Wait, piercing damage. Sweet. As the centipedes crawl over you and then scatter. Uh -huh. Then the green slime pot cracks. Uh, give me a constitution save. Oh yeah, 19 plus five. You're good. Is my constitution oh, plenty? So green slime yeah. doesn't hit you or deal anything Wait. to you. And I need another constitution saving throw as the cage bursts open and a skunk crawls out. A skunk. A skunk. Get skunk. Sixteen. Oh, he is not plus going five. To You're good. With us. Oh, You're okay. good. You're good. Yeah. So ah, except I got stung by the centipedes. Ah, centipedes, yep. my second least favorite insect. Yep. So ah. the centipedes scatter. The skunk runs away. The scorpion comes unattached from the stick, and that one is dead. Wow. So wow. my cobalt inventors are gonna go. One of them just died. The other one's gonna go. The other one is gonna look up, and he's gonna. Scurry up the wall and come up to Debra. Bad call, bro. And he's <laughs> going to roll a d8 to see which of his random objects he's going to use. Uh, ooh. So the kobold throws a small basket of centipedes at you. <laughs> That's a very <laughs> fun mechanic. I like um, that. Props to the DM on that one. 14? 
Oh, but yeah, that hits me. My armor's great. Great. Uh, I'm going to deal you some sc- some centipedes damage. <laughs> Five. <laughs> Piercing damage. Five. As, wow. as you, I'm down to 12 As health. the centipedes nip at you and then scurry away. And the basket explodes. Yes. Um, oh. Now it's Deborah's turn. There is a, uh, a kobold that just threw a basket of bugs at you that also has a wasp nest in a bag and a skunk in a cage and a scorpion on a stick. And your uh, your barrel is also about 40 feet away in some fire uh, if you want to take a, take a swing at that as well. There's also the old gentleman who climbed up on the table and is cursing at you. And... Uh- the table is right by the, the campfire, though. Yeah, correct? still still by the campfire. To the cobalt that is closest to me, I want to command it. Uh, what's going to make it go to the campfire? Go into the barrel. What do, what do you guys think? I, I need suggestions of words. If I just told him fire, do you think he'd go in to the campfire? Um, I think if you told him fire, yeah, uh, he might shoot you. Yeah, I'd say campfire. Oh, he's a, you know what? Okay, okay, I see. Okay, so what I'm going to do... Is uh, I have in my backpack, I have a uh, bag of sand, a uh, loose sand. Okay. So I want to use my magic hand to take a little bit of this sand, and I want to just in both of its eyes, I want to just with this hand just really cool. hard, just rub in this coarse sand, just <laughs> thumb it into its eyes. Cool. Pocket sand. Uh, and and then I want to uh, uh, dexterity. I want to jump back over the wall. Great. Uh, to hide. so go ahead and make a attack roll. With your magic with hand. A, so pretend it's a magic spell. Whatever your plus to your okay, magic so a, is. 13 plus 3, 16. That will hit. Now, instead of dealing oh, cool. damage, what you're going to do is mm-hmm. blind this inventor. Perfect. The inventor is now blind. He is blinded. And you can now scurry back over the wall. Oh, yeah. His corneas are going to be wrecked. Great. <laughs> That's an after, expensive surgery. After Deborah are the regular kobolds, I'm going to give them a turn to try, uh, or I'm going to give them an opportunity again. Nope, nobody puts out the fire. <laughs> Man. Nice. Not doing great. Um, they all made their deck saves, but none of them can put out the fire. Uh, <laughs> so it's about to explode as soon as something triggers it to explode, is what I will say. And there's a fiery bag on it. There's right? a there's a sticky bomb on it. Is the sticky bomb on fire already? It's or no? it's like close to the fire, but it's not on fire yet. I, I'm gonna need someone okay. to instigate its explosion. What needs okay. to happen in order for it to explode? Uh, it, two of the regular kobolds are gonna run away from it. They'll scatter while this one this uh inventor is trying to rub sand out of its eyes. Uh, sleepy, sleepy. It's now going to be Falomer's turn. Falomer, right. you have an angle on most everything. Why, well, yes, I Including do. the campfire. Well, luckily for you, I am a master ranger with, uh, at least, I think, uh, <laughs> one more fire arrow. So, okay. from my little hidey spot, I see the barrel. How many, how many got, uh, cobalts are there? Three? So there's two cobalts still trying to put that fire out, plus there's the sorcerer standing on the table. Yeah. Uh, so I shoot my, uh, my magic arrow towards the barrel! Roll an attack. Take a count. Plus seven. Oh, yeah, that's a 19! Yep, 19's Ooh. gonna hit it. So your fire arrow, slow motion, through the air. Gets put out. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! And it explodes in a spectacular display. Um, I need to roll a save for the sorcerer now. Sorcerer makes the save. Ah! No! Um, so they all make the save, but they're going to take a gazillion damage. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm essentially giving you fireball damage. Ooh! So I'm yeah, rolling eight, I'm rolling 8d6. <laughs> they're going to take half of this 8d6. Math! 18 damage. Yeah! Reduced to 9 because they saved. Mm-hmm. Still kills the, the regular kobolds that are standing there. Mm-hmm. And the kobold scale sorcerer takes 9 to the face. Um, I give myself so a little... Uh, I give myself a little Napoleon Dynamite, like, yes! And then, um, <laughs> and then from there, I run to the cart! Okay. You are at the cart. Fantastic. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Kaizen. 
Let's see. I'd like to. Do I need to jump out? Do I need to jump away from the fire at all, or no, am I? Am you're I out of range. Okay. You are just okay. out of range of the of the exploded fire. Wonderful. Uh, I'd like to stealth uh, attack truthfully, the sorcerer. I did not know you were near that explosion. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. Remember when I said that I have proficiency in stealth? That I went and stealthed. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You can get up on the table with the sorcerer coming through where the fireball used to be. He he is looking at the fireball, so you don't have, like, stealth or anything, but you can get up and punch him in the face. Um, can I use my longsword to just take it across his neck sure. and, uh, and, and and slice him up? Try to, try to get him, try to turn him into two pieces? Yeah, go ahead and roll an attack. Uh, it's an 11... Plus, go ahead and add your proficiency, which would make it a thirteen, right? Thirteen is not going to hit the scaled sorcerer as uh, his natural scales sort of. You like stab at it, it thinking scales. it's just a lizard, but it's actually more draconic. And as you're closer to these scaled sorcerers, you see all of, or all these kobolds. You see that these kobolds are all sort of green-ish. They've got like green with little yellow tinges on the ends of their wings and their snouts and their fingers, um, and they have, we'll have symbology of a green dragon on their on any anyone who's wearing clothing has a little green dragon on them. Can I use a key point to to take an unarmed attack? You can. Okay, I'd like to take yeah, I'd like to do a flurry flurry of blows on on this guy right. since that flurry of blows hit. as the monk okay. gets a secondary attack, swings over. Uh, oh, the scale. 17 plus 6 with an unarmed strike. Perfect. Huh. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Punt him away. You know, Punt him need, away. I don't understand why I ever use uh, uh, weapons, because the only weapons I need are right here. That's right. <laughs> uh, it is uh, a 1 plus 4. Okay. 5. So 5 damage to that guy. Not looking great. He's, he's looking a little. He's looking a little worse for wear. That's for sure. <laughs> he punched him in his burns again. Punch him <laughs> in the nose. Left. He killed Mary that way. Where the, yeah. where the fuck did you burn. come from? <laughs> Piece of shit! God damn it! That hurt. Why are you? Why are you here? I'm here from the Millwood Forest to deliver you two. I don't need your goddamn life story. Why are you here? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, we're just trying to pass through, you know. We're well, you couldn't fucking like ask, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh shit, really? That's not how know. we roll. This is a toll <laughs> bridge, basically. Cards and you know. You have to pay. Battle. You have to pay homage to Bumbridge the Great, the the great and powerful. As you pass, or you could just fucking fight, I guess. Yeah, that that's a cheaper option. You piece of shit. <laughs> you're, you're all gonna well, die. Well, I mean, if they, I mean, you know, you folks are gonna be in trouble when the other people come by and they check the toll station, and it's fucking robbed and burned to the ground. Bumbridge is gonna come for your asses. Well, I didn't even think about robbing. Yeah, good idea. God, yeah. Fuck you, yeah. tiny un disembodied <laughs> voice behind the wall. <laughs> Also, when people come and pass through here, aren't they going to be happy that they no longer have to give homage to Bumbridge? No! They it's, can just yeah, pass we're through. basically, we're freedom fighters. It's like yeah, not even expensive. Good. Didn't you read the sign? No. No. no there was a sign. We, we didn't, we don't know your language. Well, shit. <laughs> All yeah, right. that's on uh, you. Yeah, <laughs> maybe write it in common next time. I guess, I guess, you know what? Good note. We will also <laughs> write it in common. But for now, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! Um, Quacha is in the... is just gonna stay hold up in the in the camper and watch. Doesn't uh, doesn't see anything that needs to be done. How, how are you doing? I, I can actually use another heal. <laughs> is it... but... Or is it dangerous over there? Well, no. <laughs> Roll a deception check. No. Nine. <clears throat> Minus one. Eight. So Quacha is going to like scoot <laughs> over here, peek around the wall and says, that isn't true. And will point at you <laughs> and is going to cast. It's going to cast healing word. 1d4 plus two. Five. Word. Back up to 16. <clears throat> I'll take it. That's my last spell for the day. All right, thanks, Quacha. <clears throat> okay. You and keep doing you. He's gonna hey, go. He's gonna go don't back. Don't ever let the boys 
make you feel less than. I, I, what? <laughs> Why, what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what are you, okay, bye, have, good luck. And he's gonna, go, or she's gonna go back into the uh, caravan. Um, it's now the Are scaled you? sorcerer's turn. The, the the scaled sorcerer's gonna turn around and say, "You could have just paid the toll, but now I gotta do this a bippity boppity bullshit." And is gonna try to charm person on uh, Kaizen. Kaizen, about mm. time she gets charming. Jeez, she needs some personality I need help. A <laughs> wisdom saving throw. Uh, would an elf do? Well, and if a wood elf could, wood elf. <laughs> wood elf, wood elf, all the wood it could elf, if a wood elf could wood elf. So you have awesome. advantage on this wisdom save, uh, which means you'll roll, roll a d20 twice. Why roll a 20? What was that? I rolled a 20. There you go. So, <laughs> oh. Wow. So the sorcerer Great. goes, bippity bobbity bullshit, don't hit me no more, because you like me, and Kaizen goes, just shakes it off entirely, and the sorcerer goes, shit. Um... <laughs> Okay, bye! And he's gonna jump off the table. You have an attack of opportunity. Kaizen. Uh, I will take that. Go uh, I go, Fade Blood, bitches! Go ahead and roll um, an, an unarmed attack. Oh, I love these unarmed attacks. It's a 9 plus <clears throat> 6, 15. That hits. Okay, yeah. so I run after it. I just do a little two finger hit at the back of the neck, yep. and it just crumbles. What's, what's the damage? <laughs> damage? So this is a d4 is... plus 4, yeah? Yes, yeah, six total. Ouch! Fuck! <laughs> God damn it! These kobolds actually sound fun. I feel like I could have been friends with them. That's too bad. <laughs> yeah. Bumbridge is gonna fucking kick your ass! God damn it! Piece of shit adventurers! With your, with your <laughs> 10 foot poles and your 50 foot ropes. Get the fuck out of my house! <laughs> <laughs> that was the sorcerer's turn. It is now Krulax's turn. Krulax, you have a dead uh, inventor in front of you mm. and a broken skunk cage. You see the sorcerer about 25 feet away from you. You see the other surviving um, kobolds about the same distance as well. There's like four kobolds over there and no one on the side of the fence except for Kaizen, who's kind of far away. And plus we got <clears throat> Jerky McJerkface running back toward the caravan and I don't trust him. Uh, in this particular situation, who is Jerky McJerkyface? That's you. Ah, okay. <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, I run, that to the <clears throat> I run to the other side of the fence. Okay. And I shove Falamir towards the, uh, towards the kobolds. What are you doing, you stupid him. hairy Ed dog? So you can, you can- Get in there and fight, bitch! So I think Falamir is near the like at the helm of the caravan. <clears throat> okay. So what you can do is you can grab him and like throw him toward, like try to throw him off the caravan. Yeah. Go ahead and make an attack <laughs> roll. This will count as your de your grapple. <laughs> Falamir, okay. roll a dexterity or strength saving dexterity. throw to not get pushed. 18 <clears throat> plus 18. Um, I rolled a 15, so it was 18. So 18 to 18. Uh, no, I rolled an 18. Yeah, he rolled an 18. Plus. Oh, yeah. So in that case, you're able to grab a handful of shirt and pull Falomir down and push him towards the kobolds. And you can... Nice. Uh, and I shout, get in there and fight! What? Quit running away! <laughs> what are you talking about? I just destroyed a bunch of them with a the giant explosion. I am not, not fighting. And then you ran away! Fight! <laughs> <laughs> don't you know how a bow and arrow works, you filthy slug in the dirt? I don't trust you by the... I don't trust you by the... I will deal with you later! As I pull another quiver out of my... Uh, or I, I pull another arrow <laughs> out of my quiver. It is now the Cobalt Inventor's turn. The Cobalt Inventor is going to rub its eyes to get the sand out of there. Oh, that's only going to get it deeper. <laughs> um, so it is going to be able to partially see. All of its attacks will be at disadvantage now. Um, and so he will take another barrel that's sitting here, pick it up, hoist it over his head, and throw it at the at your caravan. Over the wall? Isn't yeah. Is he on the other side of the wall? He's, oh, he's on the top of the, the on the top of like the catwalk. Where, oh the, where the barrels were. If only we had Everybody some kind of warrior that could have finished that guy off before he did anything. Maybe he shouldn't have run away. So I'm going <laughs> to say that this is a strength thing, which kobolds are not very strong. 
Um, but it rolled a 14 minus two, which is good enough to get it over the wall. So there's a barrel now next to Deborah and Faramir, maybe oh 10 boy. feet from uh, the, the caravan, and it breaks on the ground, and oil Great. now covers your feet. Boom. Deborah? No. <laughs> And the inventor looks down and goes, ooh. Um, Deborah, it's your turn. I'm going to command the partially blind dragon to a moisturize, uh, hoping he'll use his poison Okay, jar. what is the save? So for me, spell save DC is 11, but I have plus three spell attack bonus. Right, but it's just it's just charisma. the save. Oh, okay, just the save. And this okay, is a 11. wisdom save? Spell casting ability, it says charisma. Okay, it's charisma. So I don't know. So, so you need to roll an 11, right. counting your charisma? Yes. So uh, the number on my dice is an 11. Uh, my charisma is minus one. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so you command him to moisturize. Uh, and this kobold does understand common. <laughs> That's um, good, because looking at his skin, I would not have guessed he knew what that word meant. Right. So uh, from somewhere on top of the wall that you can't really see, the, the dragon goes... Yeah. Um, sure. And it starts to just sort of rub itself sexily with motor oil. <laughs> uh, and like Sexy like Laser Corn uh, was was rubbing his wounds. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this is the inventor, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's not going to do it with motor oil. It is instead going to do it with one of the liquids that it has on its person. Yeah, I was hoping it would do it with that green, with that green With the green arson. slime. Yeah, it's going to do that instead. It's got a clay pot, and it's going to go gonna pop that green pot lid and just like just <laughs> slow, slow motion, motion slather himself head up. and yeah. shoulders commercial pour green slime on himself um boy that's nasty huh yeah <laughs> sexy i think you mean yikes does well, that hurt him that's like an acid, it's gonna right? it's gonna hurt him <laughs> <laughs> okay well that's not gonna be great in a minute um that was Deborah's turn, uh, unless you want to move, Deborah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get out of this like oil area. I'm actually gonna move right uh, over to where Kulax is. I'm gonna try to get close to him, maybe behind him if I can. Like there ish. Uh, yes. Cool. Actually, yeah. Works for me. Now it's gonna be Falmir's turn. Uh, Falmir, you've been unceremoniously pulled from your steed. <laughs> yes. Um, was I? I wasn't trying to get on, for, for clarification, I wasn't trying to get on the steed. It was more just like onto the, uh, the, yeah. and, and then, you know, my, whatever I was trying to do, uh, is still a mystery. Um, I get you. so I, so I, am I technically right now in the oil? You are right now in the oil. Right. Never trust a dwarf to do a ranger's job. So as I, as, as moving backwards out of the way of the oil, um, oh, how close to the oil are they? They're not close enough to... Okay. To, for a uh, so as, <clears throat> as I get out of the oil, I just but take no. another arrow. Well, I had my arrow out of my quiver, and I take a shot right at one of the cobalts. Seven plus five is twelve. Twelve is their armor class. Oh, okay. <clears throat> the simple cobalts, not very hard to hit, yeah. not very Hard to tough. miss those guys. And uh, now actually, like, I think this might be the first time this entire uh, campaign where I'm actually rolling uh, for damage here. It's a D8. Yeah. Plus three. <laughs> All right. Uh, seven. Roll to seven. And plus three is ten. That is enough to kill it. Nice. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I put one shot, all of one my kill. character, like, uh, my character build just into being able to do damage with arrows. I have no magic. I have no special abilities. <laughs> all I can do is shoot arrows, and I kind of do Great. that well. Hey, it's Hawkeye. So you're able to clear this one out, and it's dead. <clears throat> and I, and I, straight I look through at, the head. I look at Krulax, like, there, are you happy? How many have you killed so far? <coughs> I killed one, but it was definitely a bigger one. Three for me, bitch! <laughs> yeah, but mine counts as, like, five. Kaizen, you are on top of a table. You look epic in the middle of this burning scene. But uh, they are a little bit further away from you as the one kobold sorcerer is like, eh. Eh, trying to like pull itself along. <laughs> Still the fuck away from on. me, man. I like I like your sense of humor. I think you're pretty funny. <clears throat> um, and and then there's also the uh, the inventor that's still alive. Right? There's one inventor that's still alive. Who's moisturizing? That is currently moisturizing. Hey, 
Moisturizing. Is, you can take the sorcerer prisoner if you want, if you think he's pretty cool. There's yeah, one he's... sorcerer and there's one regular kobold. I'll uh, move towards the sorcerer. I, again, uh, just creeping up on, on the sorcerer. <clears throat> yep. I guess I can grapple him, huh? You and, can and, if you like. Yeah. Yeah, I, I guess I'll grapple him in a, in a rear naked choke and see if I can just choke him out. Cool. <laughs> Go ahead and make a uh, dexterity attack roll. I'm going to make a dexterity oh saving throw with my sorcerer to not get grappled. So I got an 11 plus 6 dexterity. 17. I rolled a 14 plus 2 for my dexterity. So I have a 16. So I am grappled. Grappled! <clears throat> nice. If I, if I can't kill the man, then I'm going to make him my friend. I'll let you incapacitate him without killing him, putting him to zero if you deal him enough damage. So go ahead and roll your damage dice for your unarmed strike. See if you put it to zero. Three, <laughs> you got him in a choke three plus four, seven. Head. Yep, seven's how many hit points he had left. <laughs> Yee. Oh my nice. god! <clears throat> That's messed up. I'm gonna choke him. Why are you fucking doing? <laughs> tap, tap out. <laughs> and goes down. Oh, I didn't yeah. love that in class. <sighs> Kaizen with the sleeper hold. <laughs> um, I love it. Ass. It's Quanch's turn again. Quanch is just sort of hanging That's out. That's why she's on the team. <laughs> Quanch is just looking around. Just like trying to stay out of trouble, hides under the cart. <laughs> Top of the round again. Uh, well, the sorcerer is unconscious. Nighty night. Krulax. I don't trust. Oh man, this is such a rough decision because I want to get out of the oil, but I don't. Also, don't trust Falamir. Stuck between an oil place so, and a ranger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Falamir is actually ten feet to the left of the of the um, uh, cart right now if you want uh, to scoot over. Yeah, sure. I'll okay. run for the, the last remaining kobold over there. Okay, so you can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 20. Yep, you're up there with him. Okay, well, we can back up 5 actually and I'll I'll, I'll hit him with my axe whip again, Great. I guess. So <laughs> the uh, the dead one, you stand behind like, there, there's a dead one in between you and the one mm -hmm. you're looking at. And the one you're looking Great. at like looks up at you, looks down at it, looks up at you. Prepare for the grapple axe of death! Yeah, we rolled a 12 plus 5, 17. Yep, that'll hit. Sweet. Grapple axe of death. <clears throat> Two plus. I cannot roll damage today. Uh, uh, don't worry, you've got someone that can do that for you right behind you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, Two plus. Five, so five okay. damage. They have five hit points, so you get Woo! that one. Nice. Wow. Chunk. <clears throat> and you yeah. can describe for me... It's Grizzly Demise, if you so choose. Yeah, sure. So I, I uh, take the whip and I wind it up a couple times and I throw it and it kind of wraps around his neck and then it like, it circles back and it gets Ooh. tighter and then it goes <laughs> right into Whee! his neck. And then he, nice. he blood spurts out everywhere and he, he, uh, he moves his little dragon jaw, but nothing happens do, do, and then he falls Do over. I see this happen? Sure. Yes, I, you have an angle on it. I, oh, uh, no, not to get... <laughs> And I pass nice. out. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't like gore. Okay. Yeah, he throws up every time. He sees something gross. He's thrown up on himself several times at this point. Yeah, he threw up when I blew that guy's head open. And it seems as if you have cleared this cobalt encampment to bum bridge the great and powerful. Wait, what happened to the one tinker guy? Covered that was in the green the goo. Oh, he's yeah. covered in green goo. Oh, I will narrate what happens to <laughs> as um, careless whisper comes on. <laughs> and slow motion green slime pot starts pouring all down this kobold and it covers a five foot square and deals just a million damage oh just <laughs> it's a d10 and then 2d10 and then 3d10 oh god of acid every <laughs> round I'm passed out, so I don't see this happening. Luckily, I just went. Deborah. Yeah, I want to take my magic hand, um, and I want to uh, use it. I want to brush it. I want to brush my pointer finger up against uh, uh, Quacha's skin, and then I want to bring it up to the cobalt or to the to the to the uh, inventor, and I want to just shh on his lips and slowly distribute the poison as I shush it as it melts. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Uh, so go ahead and roll a constitution so save evil. yourself to not get poisoned by Quacha. 
Oh, with my mage hand. Oh, with your though. mage hand, with sure. Mage hand. So you scoop yeah. up some yeah. little mage, some little poison, and Get it floats over boots. to the inventor. <laughs> and you Here go, comes the choo choo train. <laughs> Shh. Does Quacha have any reaction to this? Quacha is like, like looks at the boop <laughs> on his snoot. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's just like, well, that might as well happen. <laughs> um, and then the mage hand goes up over the wall and shh. And it, as it drops down the kobold's mouth and catches a little bit of the lower lip, the rest of it melts in the same <gasps> way as acid uh, eats away and it's entirely destroyed. Uh, never once have I been more glad to have a character not be conscious. <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. So that appears to be the end of combat. However... Cool. The explosion that occurred was quite visible. Made, made a bit of a noise as well. Echoed through the valley. Um, you're able to move the barricades out of the way from this toll booth, apparently. Mm-hmm. This, this cobalt toll booth. And you're able to take your wagon train through the encampment and continue on your way. Cool. Go ahead and roll perception checks for me. Uh, while they were clearing, I, I did come back from my, my little uh, fake. Wow. Okay. 16. You all can make perception checks. 20. 27. 27. Uh, I'm an 11 plus perception, which is 2, so I'm 13. As you're rolling through, uh, you are out of visual range of the uh, encampment. You're able to sort of gather yourselves. You have all your horses. You have all your things. You're allowed to look through the encampment, by the way. Oh, sure. <clears throat> if you want to. Want to. Um, yeah. yeah, tell me how long you want to stay here. Very let's quick. make it quick. Guys, yeah, let's do a quick one 10 minute quick, sweep. So quick. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and do um, in, um, investigation checks for me. 13 plus <clears throat> 0 is 13. I'm 18 plus 4, 22. I'm 9 plus 2, so 11. <clears throat> Mine's just an 8. Okay. So I will say that you are able to collect a number of the things that the kobolds have. Um, they have daggers, they have slings, um, the sorcerer has a ritual kind of dagger. It doesn't seem to be magical in any way, but uh, it, it has that. And then, of course, the inventor that is still alive <clears throat> has an unused Wait, still vial alive. of acid. What? Which one's still alive? Sorry, not still alive. Still not destroyed. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. <clears throat> yeah, that um, didn't dissolve. Yes, been, and all of the things on it were dissolved as well. Yeah. Uh, it looks like that kobold has a vial of acid, or a flask of acid, Ooh. I should say, which I will link to you. Uh, they also have a vial or a flask of alchemist's fire. Uh, that one also has a green slime pot, uh, mm-hmm. and it looks like also has a rot grub pot. The what heck is two that? Different rot grub, grub. Grub, two, two different pots. Just like insects? <clears throat> like grubs? You'll have to look into it to find out. I don't want to look into Can it. I, uh... <laughs> What do you guys want out of that? There's that sling. I kind of want the, uh, maybe the ritual dagger and those rot grubs. Dude, I want the alchemist fire. Okay, take that. Uh, I'll take the green slime, and can I also bring the sorcerer with us? You seem kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I got shackles. And shackle <clears throat> yeah, and, he and is unconscious, and, and... Uh, and you can toss him in the back with your collection. Oh, great. Yay. We are just now collecting okay. different species as we go on this adventure. Good. And New friend. let's make sure to, to gag his mouth with Quatch's other foot. Right. Mm-hmm. What? Wait, what? Both of them are sucking on some poison. Um, so the, the actually, it's interesting because your caravan, it's like a paddy wagon, right? It's <laughs> like the, it was designed to hold people. And so there was one loose set of shackles, but you can also shackle people just to the wall of the caravan. Oh, dope. Let's shackle Bantu and, uh, and the sorcerer. Cool. Wasn't that my plan from yeah. the beginning? <laughs> Yeah, but we don't listen to you after you started betraying. I did not betray <laughs> no one! <clears throat> so as you put this unconscious kobold sorcerer, um, who's definitely going to be your friend, for sure. Like, real talk, I love away. that we have a necromancer next to a sorcerer kobold just <laughs> in our trunk. Yeah. 
This can't I mean, go bad in any way. Surely uh, there's a bounty out for cobalt sorcerers from the mountains. Uh, I um, I had a 22 for my investigation, and they said that this was like kind of like a toll bridge area kind of thing. Yes. Uh, was there some some treasure in gold yes. that was left? With your 22, you're able to find a good amount of treasure. Eight gold, and you also get... Yes. You find a potion. Doesn't look like a healing potion. Um, and it's sort of, it's sort of effervescent and light blue. Your, your favorite terrain is the coast, am I, am I correct? Correct. You've seen these before. This is a potion of water breathing. Oh, okay. Oh, neat. Mm. So you find a potion of water breathing in the, uh, in the sort of lockbox. Yeah. Um, there's also a lot of, like, copper and silver if you want to take, uh, some more, uh, coinage. I would say another eight gold worth of copper, Each? which is eight hundred uh, copper. Uh, that's uh, that's mine. I was the one that looked in the lockbox uh, because I was able to investigate. So uh, sure. that would be. I'm gonna say <laughs> sixteen gold. Sure, sixteen gold. Um, you find sixteen gold in like loose change. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. So like <clears throat> this is like eight two hundred dollars in yeah. quarters. Gotcha. So he's like jingling as he comes over. Yeah, to us. he's got <laughs> like, hey, did you did you find anything? Uh, yeah. yeah, just 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 some loose change. And he's got like MC Hammer pants coming back to you. Check him. Check him. You em. know, you know what would make us trust you a little bit more is if you know you gave us a little bit of an advance, each of us. Uh, but here, yeah, look at all the stuff that you were able to get from this carav- this this little park. All of these weapons and the armor that you saw- see. Look at that uh, that little dagger that's all shiny that the little rock monster has now. That is all yours. I do not want to do that. That's for your taking. I say we take his money and split it up between us. But why would I do that? I am paying you for the bounty. Well, yep, because there's three it. of us. And it's a group Here, effort. Here, you want what I have? You... Look at this. And I and I just throw down on the floor all the loose change, uh, the extra, like the, the bronze pieces, the, the yep. eight. Barrels of pennies yeah. start Look, rolling. Look, are you happy me. now? A little bit. Yeah, kind throw of. Throw it in the wagon. <laughs> it's all, so now you've got, go ahead and add 800 oily copper pieces. Oh, because I threw them on the piece. floor. That'll just, be, that'll just be in the wagon. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so you now have collected all of those things. You begin moving along. You've taken a little bit of time, but not terribly much time. This place also has rope and tents, if you want tents. Um, but it's all, like, kind of gross, right? It's, like, all kind of moldy and not really very good. Um, and you move along. And you're back on the road. Oh. I had 27. Eisen, you're riding on... Where do you ride when you're riding? Up front, uh... <clears throat> yeah, up okay. front in my merry clothes. So you're you're riding up front, and it's a beautiful day. It's getting close to sundown, um, but it's still light out. And uh, you catch above you some sort of flying animal that looks vaguely green. Guys, and... I don't want to say what I think I just think I saw, but um, do you think we might have pissed off a dragon? Yeah, at least we got a hostage, right? Do you think he cares about this one? And he is a sorcerer. That's a good that's a good thought, Deborah. We definitely could use him as a hostage. Are we sure it is a dragon? I think we would have heard a dragon. Uh, so go ahead and roll. Let's go with uh nature or arcana to see if you think it's a dragon. All of us, or just whoever, whoever. Now that it's been pointed out to you, uh, well, I'm, a, I'm a I'm a racer. Uh, racer. I'm a ranger beastmaster. So. <clears throat> oh, perfect. Okay. So you yeah. would probably oh, just no, know. I rolled a one. Oh, you rolled Jesus. a one. Yeah, I rolled a one. <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, I would have said that you probably just know, but. <laughs> it's like, oh, you saw a dragon. <laughs> yes, yeah. we haven't seen a dragon in it forever, and here you are saying, oh, I saw a dragon. Right. Sure. <laughs> I've got, I've got proficiency in Arcana plus four. Can I roll? You absolutely. I rolled a three, total of seven. Boy. I mean, you guys I, didn't uh, catch good, gr- good glimpses of it. So it's per- it's possible that you just didn't see it well. Um, okay. But ca- I rolled a ten with zero ar- arcana and zero nature. <laughs> okay, I mean a ten. You caught glimpse of it. It certainly was a winged lizard thing. Um, it didn't look green, it, and it was green. It didn't look terribly big. I mean, it looked like your size. 
It looked like a human sized Listen crew, I know what I saw. I, I saw what I saw. It was green, it was flying. Uh, we, we should be careful. We pissed off somebody. Uh, and in the yeah. distance, you hear a, a, uh, rah! like kind of a cute. <laughs> was that the kobold um, in our trunk? What was that? And it says, my vengeance will be swift. And that's where we're going to end. Uh, <laughs> all right. That's the end of this one. As always, there's links to all these fine people in the description. Mari, Jovenshire, Noah, and of course our DM, Ruben, uh, be sure and check them all, check them out. And also be sure to tune in next time, next week, uh, at the same time for the next chapter of this amazing D&D adventure. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 To be continued next time on Tales from Tetheria. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to see last week's episode, that'll be right over here. And if you want to see next week's episode, that'll be right over here uh, when it's live. When it's not live, it's just a link to the whole D&D playlist. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and also, uh, this is available in podcast form, in case you just want to listen. Check that out, link in the description. Okay.